All righty. How we doing? We having fun? We learning cool stuff? Who are we missing? Are they still out there? Uh-oh. Someone might want to send the elevator down because sometimes it can't get back up after a certain time. Well, actually, the elevator went. No! Oh! All right. So, did we get our auras combed? Did it feel good? Question. Yes. In order to create that, uh, the, 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 the energy, you have to be the energy first, right? You have to feel the energy yourself. I need a little bit more information. How can I transfer the energy into her? It already does. Once you've created a connection, come here. <clears throat> This is where basic physics comes into play. Stand here. <coughs> what most people try to do, and it's not wrong, it's just, I, I mean, I'm lazy, just the way I deal with things. So they think of energy like water. That's the metaphor most commonly associated with water. And so just like we're going to take water in a hose, we're going to go, <laughs> I'm going to fire hose her. Right? It doesn't really work that way. It can but you're going to spend a lot of energy <coughs> to do that. <coughs> One of the ways that, that we can begin to access the system, and this is something I want you guys to cultivate, is something we call uh, resonance or synchronization. <clears throat> the human heart radiates an electromagnetic field that is measurable by instruments eight feet in diameter from the human body. Okay? If you want to check the science on it, Go to heartmath.org. Okay? They've taken measurements of a dog and his boy out playing in the yard. And when the rapport is there, within 15 minutes, their heartbeats synchronize. Okay? It's a dog and a boy. Not hypnosis as we understand it. It's actually a very, very old form of hypnosis not the modern form that we've been brainwashed into thinking is real hypnosis. Okay? They call it coherence. It is an expression of the law of physics known as resonance. Things that have our, ba our molecular based objects seek synchronicity. They sync harmony with other rhythmic sources. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just the fact that Jury is a human being with a pulse means that her body has motion to it. But just the fact that I'm a human being with a pulse means there's motion. If we approximate the same physiology and just wait, the systems will start to synchronize. You see it? You see it? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's as reliable as the law of physics. That which is above mirrors that which she's trying to fight it now. Look. <laughs> okay. You can all do this because it's going to happen no matter what. The way you slow it down is to try to make it happen, which is what we're taught in hypnosis school, by the way. Assume their physiology, match and mirror them, and wait for them to follow you. No, it can't not happen. But the interesting thing is, because we're working on a somatic level, on a material level, she started to sway again and caught herself, okay? When the body starts to change, the limbic system starts to change. The neocortex starts to change, and her, her perceptual filters change. Her reality changes from the body out. All I need to do to generate a feeling in jury is generated in me. <laughs> and she will follow. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> but you're generating 
the feeling not what you want her to feel. If, remember, once we have coherence, mm -hmm. anything I generate in my body, her oh. body will duplicate. Yeah, okay. You generate in your body. Not what we no, the fastest way for me to drain my batteries mm -hmm. is to try and send something into jury. Right. Gotcha. Which is what we, most people are taught energetically. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I've said this in, in trainings on different things. I will say it here. Rapport is the secret to unlocking the universe. What, what most people are taught of as ways to get rapport and what rapport really is are many times just plain inaccurate. Okay? Does that mean I can't... If I, if I, once I have synchronization, if I start to build energy, her energy starts to go up. Okay? Lots of ways to work with the system. Right? But this is where we want to start. If I can get this level of resonance with another person's body, now, whatever I visualize, whatever I feel and be becomes real in my world, becomes real in hers. Her mirror neurons, her proprioception, every form of pre-conscious information processing is in sync with me before I open my mouth. That's why if she if reach, reach out and grab one of those pictures that you don't like. Just reach out and touch it. That's why I can do this. What happened? It's gone. What? Pick another one. Just Try to get it back. <laughs> what happened? <It's> gone. <laughs> How the hell does that work? I didn't swing a watch at her. Go sleep. I don't have to. When the synchrons, when the systems synchronize, and you have the right state, her universe and my universe are the same universe. We share one reality. And as long as I treat it that way, I can change her. Now, I would never do that for something she didn't want. That's why I had her pick things she didn't like. You got something you like? Reach out and touch it. Trace the edges of it. Mm -hmm. Take both your hands, trace the edges of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's that big? Okay, put your hands down. Now her eyes are closed. What just happened? Do I have it? <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it stronger or weaker? Mm -hmm. It's strong. Did I tell her to feel that? Not consciously. Right? This takes patience mm -hmm. to develop. But once you can do it, you have the building blocks of something really powerful. But you've got to clean your shit up first. Because until you cleaned up your shit, you got no business slogging through anybody else's. <laughs> What's cleaning up your shit? It means clean up your emotions, get your identity solid, get your, you know, those little, those little uh, eccentricities and little peccadillos that are just basic little character quirks that once you add more energy to the system become gaping character flaws and psychosis. Get those cleaned up first before you start adding juice to the system. You notice I didn't teach you any energy building technologies tonight. I got tons of them. I got a gazillion ways to tap into all different kinds of energies, all different frequencies, element, elements, um, electromagnetic fields, elect, you know, different, all different kinds. Far, far more than, than uh, the average energetics course is going to teach you. Here's why I didn't show them to you. I spent many years thinking, oh, just get more energy, have more energy, have more energy, have more energy. Well, guess what? If you have a little insecurity at the unconscious level and you add more energy to it, what do you think is going to happen? This is why these pure, holier than that, you know, evangelists, guys who are, you know, as, as straight as, as, as an arrow, 
20 years later, after being surrounded by all of these people throwing energy at them, adoring them, worshiping them, you find him in the back of an alley with two ounces of coke and a $10 whore. Because the, the system couldn't handle the wattage going through their system. When energy hits your system, it amplifies whatever's there. That old joke by Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was talking about a guy who you know, says, well, alcohol just makes you more of what you already are. And Bill says, well, what if you're an asshole? <laughs> right? Yeah. The problem is most of us feel inherently powerless. Or we feel fatigued all the time and think we lack energy. Many times it's the reverse. We feel fatigued because there's too much energy. There's a block. There's a clog. That's why I taught you clearing exercises. Because once the system is regulated and you know how to deal with stuff, now you're ready. I taught you applications. I taught you that you can go out and things you can go out and do, right? So I haven't, I haven't taken away from you. I've enhanced your ability to do things. I just didn't teach you how to make, put more juice in the system. Why? Because for the most of you, your systems aren't ready for it yet. I know because dipshit here, all he did for the first 10, 10 years of, of his energetic study was build energy. And you know what? That'll work until it doesn't. And then you spend the next 20 years trying to recover. Or you wind up in jail. Or acting on a whim or a, an urge that 20 years ago, before you started doing those things, would have just you know, came and went. Now it's because you feel powerful and unstoppable and a little off. Yeah. So the whole point is, is that you can do a lot of things without the need for more energy if you take things one step at a time. And just the act of clearing out your stuff opens up a whole new world. I, I tell people, whether you're in my romance classes or my persuasion and influence classes, my therapy classes, which I have some classes coming up I'll tell you about in a little bit, most people go through life with the equivalent of a jet engine and an anchor strapped to their back. And it's the difference between the drag and the thrust that determines how far they get how fast. If all you did was cut the anchor and get rid of the drag, you'd take off like a rocket. Most of you, when I went around, very few of you had Every the first words out of your mouth, I have something I want to get rid of. I have something I want to get rid of. I have something I want to get rid of. It wasn't, I have something I want to do. I have something I want to get rid of. So that's what we taught you. <coughs> Remember, there's no, you can have a seat, Jerry. Give her a big round of applause. There's no such thing as a random behavior, consciously or unconsciously. We live in a universe that is so fundamentally interconnected that it gives the appearance of being random. Okay, we've all heard the butterfly effect, where a butterfly flapping its wings in Japan causes an earthquake somewhere over here in LA or whatever, right? I know I mangled that story, but you get the idea. So start with learning how to cleanse your fields, right? Learning how to sense your energies. Learning how to, energy hygiene is important. I can't, reg, I can't stress it enough, okay? How do you do that? We'll start with the the, the combing that we did, salt baths on a regular basis is good. It's as cliche as the sound, hugging a tree for 10 or 15 minutes will help. Salt bath. Yeah. Uh, there's techniques I teach. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll hear me talking about a technique called the gray room. Uh, it's, it's freely available on YouTube. Come on in, guys. Great way to clean your stuff out. Uh, what, do you say? what do you call it? It's called the gray room. The gray okay. room? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we'll have time for it today, but uh, Tracy, can we pass out the, the practical magic handouts? Um, how many people had a good time tonight? Raise your hands. Did you learn a lot? Okay. Does anybody have, before I hand out what I'm about to hand out, does anybody have something specific that I didn't directly address or that you want, you would like a little extra help with? Because I know some of you are getting tired and want to go home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emotions, uh, things, recurring thoughts. Uh, when you find yourself creating the same kinds of results over and over again, like you keep meeting the same kind of guy. Yeah, so how do you clean that up? <clears throat> well, the first thing you do is 
Um, there's a technique that I, that I, in my Hidden Laws of Attraction course called STEMS. And basically, it's a list of questions that you ask yourself. And you basically repeat the question over and over and over again and answer it differently every time. And what will happen? Um, it's in my Hidden Laws of Attraction course. And I think there might be a video on it floating around on YouTube. But if you guys want, I will post a PDF of the STEMS questionnaire for you guys. But it, it helps to have somebody actually uh, guide you through the process. But it would, I don't have one with me, but it would literally be if I was working with, what's your name again? Valerie. If I were working with Valerie and, and she had something going on, I would find the appropriate question that would fit her statement. And I would repeat the, the first half of the question. And I would have her fill in the, the second half, like the answer. Like if I were to actually forgive the people who hurt me, I would, and she would answer. And then I would have her, if I were to actually forgive the people who hurt me, I would, and I would, have her, and I would just drill that over and over and over again. And what will happen is you will systematically move through the, the rationalizations that she's created. Then you will move into the emotions underlying the rationalizations. And eventually you get to a primal drive. But once you have emotion, the emotion, that's usually enough to begin some of the processes you saw here, where we point to it, take it out, Notice how it's spinning, move it, slam it back in. That's another one way that we could start to deal with it. Okay? That's a very powerful way. Right? The secret to it is being absorbed and focused in the process, which is where most people screw up. How many people here were ever little children? Okay, good. So anybody here, you were never a little child. Damn you! <laughs> I'll send it out through the email, or I'll give you a link to it. Yeah, I'll send it out through the meetup board. Um, I mean, I, I could put it on NLP Power, but then it will be public access, and I don't want everybody having access to it. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's basically a Q&A process. And what you want to do is, if you're going to do this on your own, it's going to teach you to become progressively more self-aware. But you want to speak the answers out loud. And as you get closer and closer to the actual feeling, there's this tendency to want to keep censoring yourself. Because what starts to come up isn't what you want to say. Hmm that's when you start to find the fork in the road. It's the thing you don't want to say is where the magic is. So the, once you have that, once you hit that, and you'll see a lot of times they'll start going like blah, 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 and you'll see them fighting in, inside. Point to where you feel it. Because the moment they have that hesitation, there's a sensation, there's a kinesthetic sensation that they've just had. Point to where you feel it. Close your eyes, look inside, notice the color. Reach in, grab all that energy, take it out in your hands. Look at it. Did the color change or stay the same? Make sure you got all of it because sometimes that shit hides. When, they sh when you know you've got all of it, now look at it and notice it's moving in a certain direction. What direction is it moving? First impression. Remember, the unconscious mind always answers first. You find yourself trying to think of something to say or repeating the question over and over again, that's your conscious mind trying to get involved. When in doubt, pretend. Okay? Get the conscious mind out. If the conscious mind had the answer, you wouldn't be doing this process. You would have fixed it already. Okay? Your conscious mind is the least informed and the last to know because he's out for pizza most of the time. Okay? Once you know the direction, physically grab it. Like it was real, like it was there. And it's moving in a certain direction. Physically grab it and reorient it so it's moving the opposite of what it was. Because remember, energy has a code. It has an organization. It has a structure. Double the speed. Double the amplitude. Keep doubling it over and over and over again until it takes on a life of its own, until it's impossible for it to go back the way it was. And when you know you've got it, slam it back in. So it's like you took it from mm -hmm. your body? Yep. Notice the change already. Because I just put one in you. <laughs> <laughs> so all you're doing is reversing whatever was going in the direction. Here's the, the principle I use with this. I can get infinitely more precise and infinitely more artistic, but this is the bottom line. Your nervous system cannot code for a specific effect without automatically creating the code for its opposite. 
In other words, if I have pain, and I look at that pain, and I notice that it's blue or red, and I reach in and I grab all that red energy, and I take it out and I look at it, first thing I want to know, did the color change or stay the same? Stay the same. Okay. It's moving in a certain direction. What direction is it moving? This way. That means that's how I do pain. That direction. What's the opposite of pain? So if I have it rotating the opposite of what it does, now what do I get? Slam it back in. Notice the change. Notice it's gone. Right? It literally is that simple. And be prepared for whatever comes up. Because your body will start to recalibrate. It'll start to shed. Those emotions are what got you stuck in the first place. So if you fight them or try to ignore them or pretend they're not there or refuse to express them, you're basically taking a big steaming lump of poop and throwing it on your brand new life. I'm going to suggest that's not the best way to live. Right? Let the feelings come up. Let them come out. If you know it's going to be huge from past experience or whatever, lock yourself in a closet and scream into a pillow. Beat the pillow up. Whatever you need to do to discharge the emotional component. All emotions are energy and motion. Your body cannot maintain a feeling or a state when the energy is not moving. It has to do that. It has to be moving in a certain direction. Part of that is how your nervous system codes the experience. The movement, the direction, the spatial location, the color. Each and every one of those is part of your native coding system for creating that experience. Change the code, change the experience. Change the experience, change your life. It's really that simple. Or is it? Mm -hmm. The application is easy. The explanation would be daunting. right? But just to see, everybody pick something on a shittiness scale of about one or two. It means don't pick something that's going to cause a grand mal seizure. right? <laughs> but pick something that's got an annoyance factor, something that when you think about it, you have a feeling in your body. Close your eyes and point to where you feel it. Good. As you close your eyes and point to where you feel it, I want you to notice, I want you to look at it with your inner eyes. I want you to notice that there's a color associated with that feeling. What's the color? First impression. You don't need to tell me. Just make note of it. Once you know what it is, reach in physically with both of your hands, grab all of that energy, take it out, hold it in your hands in front of you. Make sure you got it all, because sometimes that shit hides. As you look at it, hold it in your hands. Did the color change or stay the same? First impression. Notice it's spinning, moving in a certain direction. Notice the direction it's moving. Once you notice what direction it's moving, grab it with both of your hands and physically reorient it in space so it's moving the opposite of what it was. It's now the opposite of what it was. Double the speed, double the amplitude, double the magnitude, double the size, double it again. Keep doubling it, double it again and again and again until it takes on a life of its own, until it's impossible for it to go back the way it was. When you know you've got it, slam it back into that spot Whoosh! Notice the change. Notice it's gone. <coughs> now, the only fact, the rate limiting factor in this is your willingness to become absorbed and focused. But even if you don't believe it, it still works. Neurologically, it has to. That's the beauty of my stuff. You don't actually have to believe it. You just have to do it. Change work is far too important to be left up to the wimpy belief systems of the client. Right? But it's as immutable as the laws of physics. That's pretty reliable. Right? Mm -hmm. OK? So uh, do we hand out the, the papers? Tracy's got some, uh, some handouts for you. We've got some stuff coming up. How many people would like to take this further? like to kind of spread the word. Okay. Got a couple of things coming up. October. Um, let me look at my dates real quick. October, we have a, a, a double event coming up. October um, 17th, 18th, and 19th, we have my three-day vibrational influence certification boot camp. If you liked 
what you learn tonight, you will love vibrational influence because it takes you even beyond this into the world of true hermetic science. We'll talk about remote influence. We'll talk about psychic development. We'll talk about how to actually raise and lower people's blood pressure from across the room. And we'll actually have you testing it on machines to prove it to yourself that you can do it. Uh, we're probably one of the few energetic psychic development programs that actually hook you up to machines, take baseline readings, and then have you calibrate blindly that you're affecting somebody's system. We'll teach you how to remote view uh, based on the original Defense Department protocols for scientific remote viewing. Uh, we'll talk about the laws of hermetics. Uh, we'll go deeper into the aspects of coherence, things like that. It's a three-day event, and it's tagged on to the beginning of uh, one of my favorite programs is called Real World Hypnosis. And uh, this is a core skills training with, a with an emphasis on regression. To me, regression is the, the nuclear option when it comes to clearing up the past. Um, a lot of neurolinguistic programmers don't think that regression is necessary. They have timeline, which is a structural-based approach. Uh, my I've found that a lot of times timeline interventions, timeline interventions don't work if there's an emotional component that has not been appropriately addressed. When you address the emotion, the system becomes more malleable. There's many times where you will try to do an NLP style intervention and it will not work. Or what happens is you'll actually see the person systematically put the experience back the way it was. And that's almost always an indication that at the unconscious level there's a fear that if that situation is resolved the way they want to do it, the lesson will be lost, you'll forget about it, and it will happen again. So many times, an NLP style intervention won't work because of that one fly in the ointment. Whereas if you can teach the unconscious mind how to take the lesson from the experience and let the rest go and refile it, change happens quickly. So in the regression skills class, which, as a rule, you couldn't get to vibrational influence unless you've been through one of my other trainings where we focus on state control and coherence training. It's, it's kind of like a, it's like a deal breaker. If you don't have it, you can't get to vibrational influence is a 400 level class. You gotta be good at trance, you gotta be good at self-work, things like that. I'm bringing it up to you guys because I'm, t I'm putting it on the front end of um, my real world hypnosis training, which covers all of that stuff. <coughs> Okay. Normally for this it's 1997.